Finally found some time this weekend to change the battery on the 250. So I just got it here at my house. Uh, the lighting's a little better. I know where all the tools are at here. So uh, we'll just kind of you know, go over all the steps and stuff like that. This is a 2011 TL250. And they've changed a lot of it, like on the new TL12s. The biggest thing that you'll notice on the new, maybe maybe all 8, 10s, and 12s, or at least the 10s and 12s, but if you look on the side of them, there's a square panel that goes right there with four bolts, and it's all flush. That is where the battery is, so in 2011, they hadn't thought of that yet, so they're a little more difficult. And yeah, it's filthy, because it just came off of that big three and a half acre yard job and I need to blow the radiator and stuff back out again but as you can see here is the battery and it's about I mean it goes almost over to the side of the machine right here so the radiator does swing out uh, it gets restricted by the radiator hoses and I want to say it may just pop open to like here so I've done this once before, but I need to look and see. It's probably been six or seven years ago when I put that battery in and several thousand of hours later. But uh, I do know we got to take the fan shroud out, which I think the easiest way is to take the upper radiator hose off. I think I can leave the bottom one hooked on. That's what we'll try to kind of, I'm going to try to walk through all the steps of changing this out, but I vaguely remember the bottom hose was able to stay on I think I actually hooked a ratchet strap to help kind of put a little pressure on the radiator but I take the top one off I work the shroud out of there and then you can kind of get the battery uh, kind of moved over there and turn and then kind of snake it out through the uh, the edge of the radiator I mean if not we can take the lower radiator hose off and then I'll have to just catch the four gallons of antifreeze in there because it'll, it'll swing open a lot further then but we're going to try this with just taking that top one loose and the shroud out and then seeing if we can switch the batteries. Here's my new battery. It's just an interstate. Uh, looks like it's 800 cold cranking amps. Cause I can't quite remember. No, this one says, it, I got it from Case or the Case dealer at the time, but I can't read what the cold cranking amps are with where it's at. Cause uh, that's the positive and then this is right here is actually where the ground wire hooks onto you hook this little wire up before you slide the battery all the way in and then you hook it up there to jump it but we'll work on getting all this stuff taken out and yes clean a lot of dust and dirt and junk like that out so uh, I will tell you that most of the sockets and wrenches you're gonna need to do a lot of the regular maintenance on this machine is either a 13 millimeter or a 17 millimeter uh, to swing the radiator, these are 19s. Then there's four bolts on the shroud. Uh, they go to the back side of this frame. I think they're actually right there. There's two of them. I believe those are 17s. And then like all the plates underneath the bottom, 17 millimeter. Uh, when you want to go and fill the hydraulics back up, which is, that, which I think is a 35 millimeter socket. You got to take this cover off, which these are 13 millimeter bolts, and then there's a 17 millimeter. So, like I said, the majority of the ones I use all the time is a 19, 13, and 17. So it's pretty straightforward on those. Let's get this radiator out of here or swung open, and then we'll start taking that shroud out. shut that thing off because it's noisy but yeah this is you can pull it open about that far and that kind of allows you to get in there and blow blow that out from the back side but <clears throat> that's about as far out as it will go uh like i said it's mostly restricted from the lower radiator man i got a lot of dirt in here but well the easiest thing to do is to uh we'll pop off the upper radiator hose and probably go ahead and disconnect or just I guess we can just take it off right here on the shroud for the overflow I 
But we gotta get that shroud out because you can see there's only a few inches of way of room. So I'll take that loose, take this out, and I can kind of move it out. I'll probably take a ratchet strap and just pull this over. Just want to be careful I don't crank on it too much with that lower radiator hose down there. Just a little bit comes out, so we'll just top it off whenever we get done. Also, I will note that uh, one of the required tools to do this job with is if just take your spare Jeep you got lying around and uh, gives you a good anchor point to uh, pull the radiator out with. We got the four bolts here, we got these two there, and then the other ones are just you kind of got to take my word for it. There's one right there, and the one down at the bottom is kind of a pain to get to, but then uh, that's the four bolts for the shroud and you can kind of pick it up and over and then I think it'll fit out there and then we're able to start taking the battery up and I'm just gonna go old-fashioned I don't think I have a I don't have an air impact on the one but this is a 17 to do these But yes, now that allows us to get a little more room. I think this guy we had to pick. I can't remember. I may have to pick the battery up and over, but. So yeah, I can just take my wrench, uh, loosen that up. And like I said, the ground's here. I need to get in here and this has got like a bolt going down here with a little bracket over the top that holds that battery in. This bracket, there's a 13 millimeter nut on top of this thing, but then there's also one over here. And then part of it's because all the dirt and junk on top of it, there's this plastic cover. It's hooked on the battery or I think it's just laying in here, but you gotta get this other nut over here. So then you gotta get Go ahead and take the positive and negative cables off and loosen that up. Then you can finally wrestle this thing out of here. But yeah, for my hand doesn't even hardly reach back there. And I'm sure, like I said, there's a bunch of dirt on top of this cover. So that's pushing it down. But yeah, I'm glad that uh, Takahuchi kind of changed, which I'm sure it's still kind of a pain, even those ones with the access to it. But uh, this is just kind of annoying. Plus, like I said, I needed to probably do a better job of cleaning it out, but I didn't have my power washer and stuff here, so we're just gonna kinda do the best we can and rake it out once I get that loosened up, and uh, maybe go back together a little easier. It almost jumps out of there. Okay, well now we got a little bit of cleaning up to do because uh, lots of dirt. <laughs> All right, well, let's clean this out and then go from there. Well, I kind of got that cleaned out. And the dirt somewhat cleaned up. Uh, I'm just gonna load that battery up, take it with me tomorrow because it's Sunday and try to go and get 
the right size. That one's a thousand cold cranking apps and this other one's 800 and then I'm worried that it being so much shorter and smaller that won't fit that bracket right. And this thing probably needs a uh, thousand cold cranking amps. So I'm sure that one would start it for a while, but it'd probably wear out quicker. And this isn't something I want to do all the time, but I know a new battery is not going to last seven years like this one did, but it should get me by for, I don't know, three or four years, hopefully. We're back at it again. And this battery looks a whole lot better. Now it's a thousand cold or 950 cold cranking amps, I think, but it's a group 31 is what they call it. So it's, I guess it's the identical battery or pretty much the one that uh, came out of here. So, and it's got a little handle on it, which is kind of nice, but uh, I'm going to kind of finish getting this cleaned out and then we'll start uh, kind of putting that battery back in there. It should be a lot easier now with uh, uh, the 30 pounds of dirt that I got out of there. So. Yeah, we'll get the negative cable on. And then this is the deal that there's a spot in the side that just hooks in there and stands up. And then uh, that, then you clean that cover thing goes on the top. But uh, yeah, I'll finish covering that up or cleaning that up, I mean, and uh, we'll get this battery put in. Gotta put the handle down to uh, put the negative cable on there Okay, we got those two tight. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and hook the, I guess we're ready to hook the positive and ground up and then, uh, then put the shroud back on, hook the radiator back up and we are good to go. Like he man that just get it good and snug. Uh, I think that's how all that stuff was zip tied together. I guess now we're ready for the fan shroud. Part 
just trying to hold your mouth to this, right, to get this thing back in there. Reconnect the radiator hose. I'd also point out you want to make sure you got good clearance, make sure the shroud's not, because it's kind of got some bigger holes than what the bolts are so which it doesn't really hit the fan but just a good idea to make sure that it's not like touching the top of the shroud uh make sure you got everything tight got the overflow put back on there we'll step back and make sure it's gonna crank if it doesn't um i don't know we'll just go get a new machine maybe Thank you guys watching and catch you later.